Thank you so much, Dan. And hello, everyone. It's really nice to meet you. I'm happy to be here today. I wish I was there uh, meeting you in person um, because that's one of my favorite things is to meet my favorite students from Central Asia. So, but I'm happy to uh, that you are, have, are here today. Um, I've worked at SCAD for many, many years, I think 10 years so far. And I also went to art school myself. So I am an artist as well. Um, so I'm very happy today to talk about portfolios. You may have questions. Please feel free to put those questions in the chat box. If we run out of time, uh, don't worry. I will leave you with my email address uh, in the chat box here and as well at the end of the presentation. Um, so please just email me if later on you know, you have a question that I did not get to. Okay, now the presentation is going to be about portfolios in general. Of course, I can tell you about what SCAD requires, but I will be giving you information that hopefully will help you no matter where you apply if you decide to apply to an art school. So let me just go ahead and start by sharing my screen. And um, so the portfolio will focus on tips for preparing your art and design portfolio. So the first tip that I have for you today is what I call do your homework. And by that, I don't mean uh, just uh, doing your homework for school if you're in high school or college or university right now, although that's very important. What I mean is research what are the portfolio requirements for the school that you're applying for because each school will have different requirements. Some schools, for example, will ask you to do a portfolio specifically for them. It will be a particular project. For example, a school might say, we want you to do 20 drawings of a still life using these materials uh, from different perspectives or something like that. So if that's their portfolio requirement, you do not want to submit necessarily that same portfolio to another school that has different requirements. So the first step really is to research what kinds of uh, portfolio requirements do, does the school where you're applying have. Now, speaking about SCAD, for example, my school, we don't ask you to do a specific project. We just wanna see examples of your best work. And for our, for our portfolio, since we have so many different programs, we also have choices for kinds of portfolios which you can submit. You can submit a traditional visual arts portfolio, you can sub, which is just uh, pictures of paintings, drawings, sculptures, photography, and so on, design work, two-dimensional. Uh, you can submit what we call time-based media, which is film. Um, so that could be animation or film or music videos that you've produced or something like that. Um, you can do some sort of combination of those two, or you can submit what we call a writing portfolio or performing arts if you're interested in one of those fields. Now, the other thing that's interesting to know about us is that the portfolio if you're applying for the undergraduate program, like a bachelor's program, it does not have to be related to your major of interest. So for example, you may be interested in animation, but your portfolio can be photography or drawing. And the reason is that not everyone has the chance to actually develop work in all of the fields that we offer. So what we're really looking for is um, your talent and your ambition and uh, your professional presentation, so on. So other questions that you can ask uh, to do your homework is how many pieces are required for the portfolio? Um, how long does the film have to be? What file formats can be accepted? And then what platform do you use to present your portfolio? Most art schools in the US will use a platform called Slide Room. That's what we use as well. This is an outside company that allows you to upload your work to the, their platform and then allows us to see and review it. And then the final question, of course, is what is the deadline? Um, again, speaking at SCAD, we don't have a specific deadline because we have rolling admission, but I would expect that some schools do have a deadline. So 
uh, moving on, I'll just in, in, in between each of the tips, I'll show you some examples of work from SCAD students. So this is obviously just a still from the beginning of a video that someone um, submitted for their portfolio. And this was a music video that they directed. Um, and here's some photography work that we received from students. And as you can see, the work can be very different. So here is a student that submitted um, really a design piece that was interested in uh, game design and character development. So something that they created. Okay, so tip two, and you do not have to wait to start working on this. My best tip for you for developing your portfolio is practice, practice, practice. Start now, work every day, keep a journal, keep a sketchbook, take classes, look at art, just think about it all the time. I mean, I can't tell you how much, how important it is to, to stay in shape. Doing art and especially things like drawing and painting and fine art, um, or any kind of really art and design, it's, it's kind of like exercise. And if you go, if you're out of shape, it's harder to get back in shape. Um, I know that uh, very well, unfortunately, um, from uh, my own uh, healthy habits, that it's very hard to get back into shape once you're out of shape. But if you stay in practice, not only do you stay in shape, but your art gets better and better. And so the more that you practice, the more exposure you have to seeing art, to practicing art, the better and stronger your portfolio will be. So again, some examples of SCAD work. These are um, drawings that someone submitted who was interested in our fashion program. Um, but again, it's just important to stay in practice and to constantly be working. Here's an example of someone who was interested in illustration. I love this one. It's called A Murder of Crows. Okay, so the next tip, to seek feedback. Um, and in uh, below that, I, I mentioned, don't listen to the voice inside your head. So if you're like me and you're an artist, you probably have a voice inside your head that's telling you some messages about how you're doing. It's comparing you to the person that's sitting next to you in your class or to other art that you see. Don't listen to that voice because we are often not our best critic of ourself. Um, there's always going to be somebody next to you who has skills in different areas um, or somebody that you perceive to be um, further along in the race than you. But remember that there's also always somebody sitting next to you on the other side who thinks that you're that person that's further along than them. Um, but my experience is that we're not our best critics, so it's best to go outside and find people who can give us really objective opinions about our work. So that could be your art teacher or some sort of mentor or experienced artist in your community. Um, and I wrote not your mom here because I've noticed as a reviewer of portfolios and, uh, and someone who talks with aspiring young artists a lot, sometimes their mother or their dad uh, comes up to me and says, my child is so brilliant, look at them. They're like Picasso or something. And then they present me something and their uh, particular opinions about their, um, their students' work is not always accurate. Um, so I, I say that as a joke, but really it just make sure to get objective opinions from people whose artistic eye you trust, not someone who is just so proud of you and thinks that you're a genius right from the start, because you do wanna have some good critique when it comes to selecting your work for your portfolio. Um, if you do come to SCAD, you'll find that we have very small classes, so you have a lot of chances to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors and to get that kind of feedback. Okay, next tip, presentation. Oh, um, I, so with the presentation, this is probably the most important for us at SCAD. What we're looking for is the most professionally presented work that you can provide. So when you're uh, presenting the work 
for the SCAD portfolio, we really consider it um, to be part of the work itself. So let me just give you an example. We could have a drawing or a painting from an incredible, it could be the most incredible drawing we've ever seen, but the picture of it is the drawing is sitting on somebody's bathroom floor and the lighting is bad and it looks kind of yellow and washed out and there's a little piece of toilet paper in the background. Probably you're not going to score as many points with that as you would uh, if you presented it with a nice clean frame and so on. Um, so the presentation for of your work is really important. Um, think of it as a visual interview. Whatever you see on your screen before you hit that submit button is what we will see. So think of it like you're in an interview and this is your one chance to give a good impression. Um, so there's a lot of considerations if you're if you're taking pictures of work that is you know in front of you, then make sure that it's lit well. Make sure that there's framing and board and borders. Edit it if it's needed. Um, now, speaking only from SCAD, I've even talked with portfolio reviewers like professors who say it's totally fine to use filters. For example, Photoshop or Instagram filters on your work because it's showing that you're at least thinking about the presentation. Uh, but check that again, because each school might have a different opinion about that. But what I can tell you is that it's important to have clean borders to make it look professional. And then one of the most important tips really on this slide is to cite sources. So if you've been looking at somebody else's artwork as inspiration, or you're doing some sort of fan art where there's a character involved or um, something like that, then you do need to make sure to cite that. We don't, one thing that you'll automatically lose points with no matter where you apply is if you present other people's artwork as your own or it implies that for some reason. So for example, if you're going to draw a picture of Spider-Man in your portfolio, it's important that you note that you are not the person that invented this character, Spider-Man. Kind of a silly example, but just an example of what um, is important. And then usually in Slide Room and the other platforms, there'll be space to describe your work, describe your process and mention the materials that you used. Make sure to use that space. Think about it like if you were going to a museum and yes, you can have a great experience going to a museum just looking at the artwork, but sometimes it's helpful to have the little cards that are next to the artwork that you're seeing, which describes the year it was made, or it gives a little historical context of that particular piece. It helps you to get more from that experience and it helps you to see and understand it in a better way. So make sure to use that space yourself to add any descriptions and things like that that you might think is helpful for the viewer. Um, so again, some examples here from, uh, from portfolios that were submitted to us. Now, I don't want you to be intimidated when you see this work. I mean, obviously this is really strong work, which is what I have the access to. And, but um, remember that we see all types of portfolios and really it's just best to submit your best work and to give it a try. Now, I do have some tips for lighting. You know, if you do have to actually photograph your work, um, first of all, it's, it, it's best to maybe go outside on a cloudy day where the light is even um, to photograph it if you do need to set up photography. If you're inside, the best thing is to make friends with your photographer friend if you're not a photographer yourself because they're going to know a lot of these tips about using two lights so that the work is evenly lit and you don't have shadows going over it and so on. You can really find a lot of the information about this if you research this um, on your own on the internet. So don't feel like you have to remember everything from this presentation. I just included this slide so that I could um, encourage you to think about it um, and uh, make your plans when it's time to work on your portfolio. 
and some more examples. Now, here is my email. Like I said, if I don't get a chance to answer all the questions here during the um, presentation, please feel free to email me anytime, whether or not you're applying to SCAD. I'm always happy to connect with you and help. Um, and I also encourage you to visit our booth, uh, excuse me, to visit our booth um, if you wanna come over and see some information we've got. Um, materials there that you can download and you can also of course chat with us as well. So for now, are there any questions? Let me see if I can see the chat here. Yes, we have a question from Nartai. Can you see it? Yes, so the question is, is if, if we have a film major and what portfolio is required for it, is that right? So um, thanks for your question. We do have a film major at SCAD. In fact, I was just chatting with my volunteer in, the, um, in our booth because he's an aspiring filmmaker as well. It's a great time to study film at SCAD because we're located in the state Georgia. We actually have two locations, Savannah and Atlanta, Georgia. And Georgia is the number one film and TV um, location in the United States. We have more film and TV productions there than they do in Hollywood now, which is, I know it's surprising for a lot of people, but a lot of the shows and TV shows that you've, um, and movies that you've seen recently are actually produced there. Things like Ozark, Stranger Things, Walking Dead, um, uh, Black Panther, a lot of the major motion pictures. So anyway, that's just a little aside, but we do have a filmmaker film program. Now, if you're applying for an undergraduate program, like a bachelor's program, you can submit a film as your portfolio. But again, like I said, it does not have to be, you don't have to submit a portfolio related to your major of study. You can also submit drawings and photography and writing and things like that. If you do submit a film, for the undergraduate program, it's a maximum, or sorry, it's between two and five minutes. So we need to see at least two minutes and no more than five. And then it's really important when you submit a film, and this will probably be true for any school that you apply to, to indicate what part of that you were responsible for. Because often films take a group of people. There's the director, the screenwriter, the, um, be the actors, somebody who did the music, and since it involves usually a team of people, it's important for you to write what part did you do um, so that you're not claiming someone else's work. And the next question I see is that if asking if we have scholarships, uh, we do have scholarships and you will be automatically reviewed for merit-based scholarships based on uh, two things. One is your academic record. Um, so those are your grades coming in to, uh, to, uh, to us. And the second is based on your portfolio and your achievements. So um, not just your portfolio and your artwork, um, but also your achievements. Like if you've been in, you know, done volunteer work or um, been involved with any interesting projects or won any awards or anything like that. Um, financial aid is a term that uh, we use in the United States to refer to government aid that comes from the US government. So we do of course have financial aid that comes from the US government, but unfortunately you would only be eligible for it if you are a US citizen. Um, so if you are a US citizen, you know the best thing to do is just to let me know at the time that you apply so that I can help refer you to those resources. Okay, uh, do we have any questions as we have around five minutes still? Okay, um, there was one more question about the average scholarship. Um, there's really a range. I'd say that most scholarships go from, you know, something I would say is really small, like 5% tuition discount up to something much larger, like a 30% tuition discount. However, um, we do have all the way up to what we call full scholarship, which is a full tuition discount, um, but those are very, very rare. And all I can say is that it's impossible for us to know what your scholarship will be until you actually apply because it really has so much to do with your particular application. 
your grades, your artwork, your experience. Once we have that application and we can go through that process, we really start to get to know you and it helps us to determine what scholarships you may be eligible for. So if you um, are serious about you know, coming to study in the US and um, you know, I do encourage you to consider it and to try, but I would say that in most cases, you do have to have a budget. You do have to have some financial resources even if you got a full scholarship, you still have to support yourself in the U.S. And so that involves, you know, having some, some money for the living expenses and so on. Um, the CSS profile, in some cases, I may ask a student to complete that, but I wouldn't go ahead and complete it unless I would, unless I would ask you to, because um, that's, more of a formal document. There's a lot of information on there that we don't need. Um, but in some cases, I may ask. At SCAD, we don't officially have any need-based aid. It's all merit-based aid. So the scholarships that you get are just based on your merits rather than your financial need. But with that said, if you do go through the entire application process and we um, and we, you know, we want you to come to SCAD, you're accepted, and we're excited about you just like you are about us. And we'll do everything we can to help to meet your need. Um, but, but that's usually by just slightly adjusting the scholarships that you've been awarded based on your merit. Great, perfect. So I think that for now, we don't have any questions. Peter, thank you so much for this informative webinar. The webinar was recorded and we will share it with the other participants of the fair um, tomorrow or, or next week. And uh, if you still have questions, you can go to the platform back and find a SCAT booth and chat with Peter May, or you can also ask your questions in Russian uh, as we have volunteers who can help you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for the webinar and have a nice day. Thank okay. you so much, guys, for attending it. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.